Hello everyone, my name is Dark Phoenix Gaming, and this is Prophecy of Pandor. Which, if you remember from last time, I am actually continuing on my live stream series that we started. Which is also a reset of a let's play that I did. Which the saves got corrupted for some reason, I'm still not sure why. So I basically just remade the exact same character and everything. Load up Arya. We're only on day 15 and I'm not anywhere near as rich as I was in the let's play, but... We have a while yet to catch up. Anyways, in the last episode, we also got asked by the guildmaster here in Valenbray to go and ransom a girl from near the village of Elktrin. Which is a problem, because that is very deep in the territory of factions who do not at all like us. I mean, if it was like Ibarin or Amere, or even uh, Telburl, then I would say there's a decent chance of us pulling it off, but literally all these guys are going to want to attack us on site, therefore we do not have a prayer of pulling that off, so when I do begin recording the episode for the Let's Play, I am immediately going to have to go back in there and tell that guy that I can't do the mission, because... We are just going to get attacked, slaughtered, and taken prisoner on our way there, and we will not be able to make it to them. I'm sorry, we just will not. That's how it is, I'm afraid. But we're getting pretty close to leveling up, which is nice. And also in the last episode, And our companion, who we recruited, got borrowed by one of the lords to go off and do a mission. So he's off doing that right now. And we'll let him do his thing, and he should be back in a few days' time. Anyways... about where things stand. Time for me to start recording the first episode. So let's get going. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dark Phoenix Gaming, and you are watching Prophecy of Pandor with me and Arya. So, in the last episode, we get given a mission by the guild master, kind of like the merchant prince or whatever, I guess, of Valenbray, and he wants us to go and ransom off his friend's daughter. Unfortunately, he neglected to tell us that 
his friend's daughters all the way up here in Elktrin, in the territory of the kingdom of Ravenstone. Now, why is this a problem, you may ask? Well, as a result of events, basically because our backstory is set up so that we are the descendants of the old kings and queens of Pandor, that means that every faction on the map, apart from Feared's Vein, the Dishar Principalities starts out hostile to us. We cannot tread a foot into their territory, or they will attack us. They hate us that much. We also have assassins that will occasionally come by and try to murder us that we see wandering around. But so far, we've murdered them instead. Sadly, what this means since Mr. Her Guildmaster neglected to tell us where the rescue was before we took the mission, I'm going to have to go and tell him that I can't actually do the mission, which he is not going to be happy about. In the slightest. About the job you gave me, well, I can't finish it, I'm afraid. Do your best, he says. Well, I can't do anything at all, because if I try to go into their land, I would get my ass attacked. Ah, <sighs> fine. Let's go see if some random noble needs an errand girl. I want to get something done. I know you? I am Arya. Lord Dirigun Farsail, a vassal of Fjordsvane, Lord of Quay. It was unusual to see a woman caparisoned for war. I hope that one day I may be the father of a daughter possessed of such bravery and spirit. Oh, this guy is actually impressed with the fact that we are both a woman and a warrior. Unlike some of the last couple who were basically saying stuff to the effect of you are a woman, therefore you shouldn't be a fighter. Which is weird given the fact that the whole backstory of things in Pandora is that it doesn't really matter. I guess it's just those individuals being dicks. I don't know. But, my lord, I do you have any tasks for me? I'm looking for work. I need to send a letter to Lord Vigdus Bloodsword. It should be at Yavik's home. Very well. I will deliver your letter. It's not a lot of money, but in this case, I'm doing it more for the increase in reputation and getting a some goodwill with the lords. Here it's Fane and Ravenstone have made peace. Yeah, I'm doing it more to get some goodwill with the lords because eventually my plans my my eventual plan is to sign a mercenary contract with one of the factions and given that the two of them like me, it's going to be either Feardsvane or Dishar. Victus blood, blood sword. Let's go to the castle. We can get in. Sure. And we'll see if anyone here can tell me where Lord. Oh, there he is. I don't need to ask where he is because he's standing right here. Good, good. Do I know you? Yes, I am Arya at your service, sir. I am Lord Vigdus Bloodsword. 
vassal of Fjordsvein, and Lord of Kloom and Clovendarn. Of the look of a mercenary, another vulture come to grow fat on the misery of this land. And you have the look of a jackass. So there. What is it? I bring a message from Lord Farsale. Uh, it was good of you to bring me this. Take my seal as proof. And a few more dinars. It's not a massive amount of money, but like I said, more for the goodwill and such than anything else. But while we're here, my lord, do you have any tasks for me to perform? And he does not. Given how much of a twat he was towards us, or being a mercenary, I'm not overly surprised. Now, Guildmaster, do you have any jobs? Cattle escort? Fuck no. I've explained this before, but the way cattle escort works in this game is just the worst. So I try to avoid it whenever possible. But there's Lord Iceheart. We've done a job or two for him in the past. Let's see if he has anything else for us. While we're around. Do you have any work for me? Sadly, he does not. Maybe the village head in Clover. That would be a no. It's infested with highwaymen. So what I'm going to do is I will save the game, and then we're going to attack. I'm not sure how much of a challenge highwaymen are. But, we have a few more men than they do, and we should have the villagers on our side, so... I'm hoping this will go okay. After all, we have farmers. are not doing a special. Great! There are still more of us. And we've just taken our first casualty. And our second casualty. Unfortunately for him, he is surrounded by a very angry peasant with half-decent sticks. So, I don't foresee this going his way. And yes, he goes down, we have advanced to level 6. Yes. Yes. Feel the wrath of my horde of angry peasants. All shall kneel before the angry peasant horde. Ha ha. So, we lost six people. One militia, one light infantry, and four trained militia. The farmers lost five, so... It's not too bad, actually, even if they were some of our more skilled people. I don't think that. 
That's the worst thing that could have happened. And we can rebuild those numbers without too many issues. In a battle worthy of song, me and my men drive the bandits out of the village, making it safe once more. The villagers have little left in the way of wealth after their ordeal, but they offer you all they can find. Now, we can take it as our just due or refuse, stating they need it more than we do. Well, what I'm trying to do right now primarily is... At the moment, we're primarily trying to build our renown, become well-known and famous, and get a better army. Taking a few cabbages and maybe a loaf of bread or some spices off some peasants in gratitude doesn't really help with that. People will start to will start to be more and more famous if we act the part. So I am going to refuse. After all, the filthy peasants need their cabbages much more than I do. And I gain honor from doing that. So, since my several of my men died, freeing you from your banded overlords, I think it only fitting that some of you come to join and take their place. They gladly accept, because of course they do. We saved their worthless peasant hides. But now I'm going to speak with the village elder and see if there aren't any jobs for us. More bandits? Really? Another group of bandits, apparently, and they take their food and livestock and kill anyone who does not obey them immediately. A man are angry that we cannot defend ourselves, but we are only simple farmers. However, with some help, I think that some of the people here could be more than that. Just need an experienced warrior to teach us how to fight. Mm. Yes, I can teach you how to defend yourself. I know how to train warriors in combat. You will? Oh, splendid. You would be deeply indebted to you, madam. I'll instruct the village folk to assemble here and receive your training. If you can teach us how to defend ourselves, I promise you'll receive everything we can give you in return for your efforts. Okay. I'm going to recruit two more people from here. Apparently I can, despite just having recruited all that they had. However, I have a few other things I'm about to do. We're going to get some more militia there, and, and Arya leveled up, so I should give her the appropriate points. Points in one handed, and that last point she has left can go into two handed. I may eventually start hulking around a two handed blade or something after all. And I think. We need more strength, because some of the weapons I've been looking at getting require a higher strength than what we currently have. say get better at 
iron flushing. I mean, it doesn't give us a massive amount of hit points, but still. But no one at this village is willing to join up, so... We will head back to Kulum and start training the peasants. As the party member with the highest training skill, we expect that getting some present peasants presents what? Get, we expect that getting some peasants ready for practice will take eleven hours. So that's a bit long, but we don't exactly do the combat training for peasants who have never held anything more than a stick very often. In fact, we're usually training people who are already receiving martial training from other places, like avoiding getting hit by sharp pointy sticks held by the bandits we regularly do battle with. And we put the peasant through the basics of soldiering, discipline, and obedience, and think that one of them has fully grasped the training and is ready for some practice. Now, I generally find that if we do well enough to actually merit a multiple adversaries at once fight, then it's not going to go too well, just because fighting multiple opponents at once doesn't tend to go that well for me, usually. And we smack the peasant with a stick. And explain to them how to not get smacked with a stick in the future. And we're just going to continue doing this until a certain number of the peasants have been trained up. And we'll then utilize that makeshift militia along with my personal all forces to fight these bandits. And that is going to be how it goes. We fight peasants, we knock them out with a stick, and then eventually we will help them kill some bandits. And probably most of the peasants will die because by the time we finish, they'll barely know the basics of how to swing their stick straight. It's going to be left to our professional forces to do this properly, not the peasants. But we'll still train them, because we did say we would. Time for us to smack another peasant with a stick. This is apparently what passes for military training with Arya. Disappointing Arya, very disappointing. We'll have enough supplies to keep training, unfortunately, so we'll keep on doing that.
Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Real life stuff. But let's carry on. Hello, Mr. Peasant. I have a stick. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And now you are unconscious. Clearly you do not trust your stick very much. And we're done smacking peasants with a stick. Our own peasants are going to do most of the fighting, probably. As we get up to continue the training, a sentry from the village runs up to us, shouting alarms. Alarms. Really? As opposed to alarms? Or alarm or something? Uh, whatever. Bandits have been spotted on the horizon, riding hard for Kulum. The elder begs that we organize our newly trained militia and face them. Prepare for a fight. And we're not just going to have the militia here, but like I said, our own horde of peasants. Equally angry, but far more or skill. That's the whole murdering bandits thing. As you can tell, our people do the bandit murder much better than these glorified farmers. Plus, we didn't even have time to get these particular peasants pitchforks, so clearly they're going to be inept at their jobs, lacking in the pitchfork department. Down goes you. And I think we have them on the run. Feel the wrath of extremely angry peasants who are half decent at what they're trying to do, unlike the peasants you came here to oppress. And a Blackheart Knight. Seriously, why do all the bandits we fight have Blackheart Knights? I'm not kidding, it feels like there is always a Blackheart Knight. Well, we got that particular Blackheart Knight killed. As I keep saying, never underestimate the power of angry peasants with sharp pointy sticks and a motivation to slaughter everything in front of them. It never fails. So we lost recruits and two militia. Honestly, recruits and militia, they're basically the warm bodies we throw at our enemies when we can't be bothered with tactics. So that doesn't matter at all. I get a little bit of dinars and expa. Bandits are broken. Those few who remain run off with their tails between their legs, terrified of the peasants and their new champion. The villagers have left have little left in the way of wealth to show after their ordeal, but they offer you all they can and find to show their gratitude. Okay, now on this occasion I am actually going to take it because they did promise us riches, or they did promise everything they could find in return for helping them, and it would be awfully rude of us to turn down our promised rewards, now wouldn't it? So we will take this and 
It's just some flax, but we can sell that for a decent profit. Worth it, as far as I'm concerned. We'll head up to Yavik's home, I think. And immediately I'm going to sell off all this flax. It's nowhere near what we would be selling it for if I actually bothered to play the trade system and find somewhere where it was worth a lot, but at the moment even 200 dinars is quite a bit for us. So, let's go to the tavern. Let's see... Donovan and Jossie are here, as is Elissa. Eventually I'm going to recruit one of them, but like I said, Donovan and Jocelyn, those two are characters with personality oppositions to each other. And I'm not sure, but I think one of them might have an opposition to... Wow. And what was the net? Yeah, to Lothaldurin. I think one of them and Lothaldurin might have a personality opposition as well, so... We want to watch out for that so I don't spend thousands of money recruiting a party member who then leaves me because of personality issues with one of the people I recruit. And... Hired hunters. They are here to hunt us, but running away like a little bitch currently. Let's go say hi. hi. There's 21 of us and 5 of them. I think we got this, but I'm going to lead from the front regardless. I would like to do the killing, he said. We only damage the horse. There. Okay. That was a hard miss on my part. Most of them are dead already. Down you go. Yeah, that was easy, as expected. One of our new recruits got wounded. That was it. Everyone else is dead. I'm going to pick up your stuff. It's basically all worthless, but I can sell it for some moolah. And 65 dinars. Now, four recruits can become militia, and two militia can become trained militia. We can now get some more light infantry. I mean, I should probably recruit, I should probably change some of them into skirmishers rather than militia, but to be honest, I can't really be bothered with that for right now, and there's also the fact that I kind of want to get a number of... I want to get a number of light infantry before I start getting any sort of archers going on. So, three more peasants to add to our numbers. Game. I'm gonna head down to Valenbrae because we've hung out in Feared's Vein territory for quite some time now, and what I would like to do is see some of the other factions. 
I feel like the, the Sharp Principalities is a good one. Red Brotherhood thieves running from us. We're not going to bother to actually chase them down on this occasion. I could chase down and murder them quite easily, but I'm not going to right now. So, yeah. Next, I'll head to Windholm. But like I was saying, we're going to head into Dishar territory next, because I'd like to start building a relationship with them. Next. And there's another lord we haven't met yet. Let's see if we can get a job from him. Uh, he wants us to start a war with the Dishar Principalities. I don't think so. <sighs> That mission is basically go attack one of their caravans or raid one of their villages. And well, raiding a village would be great because it would get me some free money. I don't want to do that to the Dishar because they're one of the two factions on the map that actually like me currently or who I can wander around their territory without, without basically immediate hostilities happening, so... Unless he wants to ask me to attack Ravenstern or Sarleon, then I'm going to have to say no, because... Like I said, I want to be able to have both factions that I can wander around. Ravenstern has now gone to war with Sarleon, speaking of. Both the factions who don't like me are trying to kill each other. I have another militia. Now, let's head into Windholm and see what there is to be done. Do you have a job for me, Mr. Guildmaster? Escort a caravan. No. Fucking escort missions. I detest the escort mission. Like, I'm gonna keep on saying this. I like the way stuff like bringing cattle somewhere or escorting a caravan works in Banner Lord about a million, billion, trillion, quintillion times better than in this game. There are things to complain about with Bannerlord, certainly, but their escort mission structure is not one of them. So we're not going to be doing that. Who are you, then? Oh, just one of those information people. And you? He's another potential companion, but one of these days I'm gonna have to look up a list of which companions I can use with which other companions before I really start recruiting them so that I can make sure that we don't start any problem between them, but we have a young Sarleon noble over here. Hmm. I wonder if there's maybe some way that we can get things on the up and up with either Sarleon or Ravenstern, so I can actually walk around their territory, as that would be nice. Yes. Oh, it's just a mercenary. I don't really need more men right now. I'm afraid I really do not. Sarleon has a caravan there. Could have attacked it, but nah. 
High Pass Fortress. Let's see if there's any noble here who would like to give me a job. Because I like getting jobs from nobles. Let's see. Seneschal and the ladies never seem to have jobs. I'll... I just fair hair. The Lord of High Pass Fortress. Okay, that's a very weird way to greet someone, I must admit, telling them they have many teeth left. But... You're less of a prick than some of the other nobles I've met, so I'll let it slide. Do you happen to have any work for me, by the way? Sadly, he does not. However, now we can head down into the lands of the Deshaw Principality. And then I can start trying to make a connection with their faction. And see if we can't get things rolling that way. Apparently someone started a crusade against them or something. I wasn't really paying attention when that event fired, but yeah. I do like the little background event stuff that you see happening in Prophecy of Pandora. I find it quite nice, really. I very much do. Let's see. Torba. Does your guildmaster have work for me? Bandits infesting the vicinity of the town, eh? 312 dinars to hunt them down. Deal. Deal. There's 35 of them, though, and 24 of us. This could be a problem. I'm going to fight them, but... I'm going to go around, do a bunch of recruiting first, so that I can get the num no. quest failed. Okay, I didn't realize that would happen. I'm going to reload. And I think we're going to have to fight them. 24 on 35. The odds aren't spectacular, but... I'm hoping we can manage... I'm hoping we can somewhat manage to pull out a win here. I don't rate my chances of doing so especially highly, but I'm going to try anyways. If it comes down to it, I will save Scum of the Bejesus out of this to manage a win. Horsey peeps. First. Okay. Okay. Friends and their horsies are very annoying. Come 
on. Come on. Fuck on. Yeah. Okay. I think we got this. I hope we got this. Please let it be the case that we got this. Serious. Blackheart again. Come on, come on, you son of a bitch, come on. That fucker insists on just riding around in bloody circles like that, but yeah. I see our black heart knight now. Uh, looks like he's not the only one left though. Still got at least two other horseback riders. Like I may be the only member of my posse. Well, I tell a lie. Temporary. Okay. It's not just me. One militia and two recruits dead, and 14 wounded. But Arya was a beast in that fight. She took down eight people by her lonesome, including a couple of black hearts. You are a badass, Arya, although. We're going to need to replenish some of those losses and gold. We found fucking gold. Oh yes. Oh yes. I don't care what you say. We have fucking gold now. Wow. The shinies. We have the shinies. Now let's give the guildmaster the good news. have succeeded now, I just need to wait for that to fire. I'll do that in a second. I 
need to at least get my numbers back up to what they were before through some recruiting. I mean, I know numbers are not everything, but... Having lots of dudes... You can deal with your bandit problem on your own, it's not my issue. As I was saying, having lots of dudes with me will help to discourage any attacks on my party. So let's go give the good news. Giving those bandits the punishment they deserve. 312 dinars for it. I would like to give more, but those bandits almost brought me to bankruptcy. Well, in that case... I guess it can be forgiven. But try not to go bankrupt from bandits again. I want to get lots of reward from you, if possible. 1200 for the gold bar, and let's see, this guy has 4581 dinars. So let's make sure to not sell over his cap, though I doubt we will, given the quality of the stuff that we're selling. Though, how fast the amount we're selling is rocketing up, it wouldn't have been much of a surprise if we had managed to sell over it. Basically 4,100 dinars now. Okay. Leslie, I think she's a party member too, actually. And Sister Mora, are you a party member? I don't remember. No, she's just one of those information people. And I'm going to go do a tiny bit more recruiting. If I can find another village where people want to join up, that is. Six more tribes. Okay. Now let's head back to Torbash. And we have a Sarleon caravan, but I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. I really do not enjoy fighting caravans. They are just a colossal pain in the rear. Just because of how much of them is made up of cavalry. Anyways, I think this will make for a good stopping point for this episode after I do my upgrading, that is. And we're going to upgrade our light infantry here to a Fearsvein Axeman. And we have two spam bots in chat, it would seem. Give me a second, everyone. I just need to ban them. And... Let this be a warning to future or right. let this be a warning to future scam bots in my chat I will show no mercy to bots trying to scam my chat you will be banned immediately and permanently so don't be a bot That's two of them now banned. I hope I don't have to do that again, but I probably will. Anyways, I think this makes for a good point to end the episode at. <clears throat> so, it's been Dark Phoenix Gaming, and you have been watching Prophecy of Pandora with Aria. 
as you can see, we're still in the very, fairly early stages, but we've had some pretty cool fights so far. And honestly, that one with the bandits where I was literally the last one standing and all my other guys were unconscious, with a handful of them being dead, that was so cool, just to me showed how much of a badass Arya is, even at this low level. But, I hope you'll join me next time, when we're probably going to start wandering across the Dishar Principality. Or Dishar Principalities, rather. And doing some work for the nobles here. In an attempt to make a name for ourselves. And beyond that, we will see where things go. But that will do it for now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. So long for now.